Hello again, Patrick. Oh, I hope I'm not intruding. If I'm getting in your head, it's not for vengeance. I, I promise. <laughs> for some strange reason, I just like sharing your space. Except uh, it's much safer now. Oh, I've got nothing to lose. <laughs> you can't hurt me anymore. Nothing can. Yeah, that's one of the advantages I hadn't anticipated in death. If the living knew about death's immunity, there would be far, far more suicides. But you're hardly a candidate. <laughs> you seemed unbothered, just so unmoved by my passing. Oh no, I'm I'm sure you regretted my death. Not for long. And why should you? <laughs> oh, it just wasn't worth your tears. If you even had any. Well, I've been thinking. You know about that movie we watched together? Yeah, and it, don't be me relating to a romantic fictional character and an American actress to boot but Irish heritage it's surely clear that the girl in the film had far better prospects than I but no that oh, I take that back few prospects were as good as you Patrick I mean based on what you told me but it's really what you didn't tell me. Well, like the girl in the film, we had left dear old Orlin for the promise of fun and adventure in the parish of the West. But she, too, had far less fun and adventure than was advertised. And she, too, settled into this moldy job leading nowhere. <laughs> she found a boo. At least it I. And she loved him. His way loved mine. Oh, I thought Lawrence loved me too. <laughs> oh, I was um, so betrayed. Oh, I was bereft. Until I met you. Oh. Like the girl in the film. Oh, he went home to dear old Doryland. She went home for her dad's funeral and Oi went home for a holiday. But it was the same dead in town that Oi left. I mean, what did I expect? That when I departed, everything would just come alive. And so Oi returned to the States like the girl in the film shade to Brooklyn and me to this city that offered support and camaraderie or so I thought ah, camaraderie and that's a word you taught me Patrick it's a handy word a welcoming word and then uh, here's where we took different paths the movie bird and away Actually, Lawrence took a different path from me. You know, somehow it was an embarrassment to him. Just because Oi was a little bit different. Not like, not like exotic, you know. I'm not the exotic kind, but he didn't want to be seen with a, uh, a greenhorn. Even though this green horn was perfectly acceptable in his bed. <laughs> yeah, that, that hit me very hard. I even googled books to help me get through it as if written word would help. <gasps> and then we found a book that I thought fit the bill. Yeah, first love in other sorrows. I didn't even finish it. 
I couldn't even finish it. <laughs> Written word was not a good recipe for recovery. So here I was in this strange country. And believe me, it was strange. Having been thrown over by a bloke who I loved. We had no one I could discuss it with. Oh yeah, sure. We had my greenhorn friends. We'd go out for a bit of creek and point. They consoled me and tried to match me with all these eligible gents. But I was on the defensive. Denny O'Malley did take quite a shine to me. <laughs> he was smart. So coined. But we had left Ireland to get away from the Denny O'Malley's. And he fell in love with an American girl. <laughs> Black to boot. Imagine taking her home to meet the folks. <laughs> Unfortunately, my mate said, treated my heartbreak as a rite of passage. A routine experience. That happens to all of us, love. Just pick yourself up and get back in the game. Something to transcend and look back upon as a learning experience. Well, I came to the realization that emotional dismissal was an American trait. Well, like, obviously not exclusively American, but the Yanks have a, quite a good look on the shabby treatment of the waker sex. Well, I was coming to the conclusion that the American man couldn't commit. That if he did commit, it was conditional. Which is just no commitment at all. And he also seemed to cling to their mothers well into adulthood. <laughs> um, it's not unlike our Irish compatriots. Did Lawrence not know how vulnerable he was? Or if he did know, then what was his, his modus operandi? Is he doing that on purpose? Did he learn that from his mom? Like, was his mom treated that way and then she taught him that it's okay to lay the girl on? So when he turned his back on my love, Hoy was cut adrift. Hoy wasn't welcome back home since my folks didn't want me to come here in the first place. Uh, America is no place for a greenhorn girlene, me mom would say. For a boy, it's okay. He'll be able to make his way in the world. As if a girl couldn't. Well, maybe she was right about this girl. <laughs> My roommates were no help either. I found them in an ad in the paper. Oi had to find three character references. <laughs> Oi should have asked for the same. They would have had a hard time finding three. Unless they asked the various men they brought home. H would easily find three references then. Uh, how could you even write a character reference based on someone you just met? Okay. Oi am entitled to pass judgment on morality, okay? It's true, true. I, I did sleep with Lawrence, but we loved him. And these slobs didn't even like some of the men they slept with. They were just thrill seekers, the money grubbers they was. And they even had the, the nerve to mock my accent. Just banshees all. Oh. Then I couldn't turn to the church. Oi had left um, years ago due to the, the priestly scandals. But Oi still had. Oi still had a sense of right and wrong. And hooking up was wrong no matter how you rationalized it. And Oi was entitled to complain since Oi was paying rent. 
Plus, I wasn't sleeping very well because of the noise. And then at breakfast, every single morning, I had to eat with these strangers. And trust me, some of them were strangers. Oh, in my own home. Or like one quarter of my home. I mean, like Brentwise. But anyway, I uh, said bye to that trashy trio. And then uh, I found a shabby studio apartment befitting my shabby little job. I hated working at M. Scott. I was a robber robbing poor people blind. Or I worked for a gang of crooks that were robbing poor people, but it was shite pain too. <laughs> and um you pretty know much know the rest, Patrick. You probably know it better than me. Uh, I sunk into this state of confusion. And it was unfocused. <laughs> I uh, started drinking alone in my room. But then I realized uh, that was a cliche. A lonely Irish girl turns to drink. So then I started doing drugs. And I, I know, I know, don't look at me like that. I know that drugs are not the answer, but it was an answer. And I was pretty short on answers. Any choice was the right choice. At least that's what I told myself. I had uh, no one I could talk to about it. Not my relatives, not my friends at the church, certainly not Lawrence. He was with his new birdie by then. <gasps> A bastard. And so the decision to kill myself wasn't a hard one. I mean, not the first attempt. Anyway, I, and eventually, I came to look at my suicide attempt as a, a blessing. After all, if I hadn't called here, contemplating my 12-story leap, there wouldn't have been a Patrick. How could I have not fallen in love all over? I, I know, I know, now that I'm, I'm gone, that I, I suffered from love obsession. Clearly a, a fatal disease. <laughs> well, for me, at least it was. Anyway, the later told me that you had been in here alone on my call and that it was taboo to leave the phones unattended, but you broke the rules. And you did that all for me. I felt seen. I felt validated. I felt like my life was worth something to someone, if not for myself. You were my Galahad. My prince. You rushed to my side. You sweet talked me off that ledge and then you took me to eat some food. You saw me on the darkest night of my soul. My life was redeemed. It was a big, bad Lawrence just evaporated. It's like a sour dream that all you had awoken from. Awakened? Ah, you, you know that, Lawrence. <laughs> I even started to like baseball. That was just for you. I mean, and myself too, since you really liked it. But my whole notion of the American manhood did a complete 180. <sighs> We're just gonna get enough of you. You, um, 
You told me that your family owned a restaurant. But you never took me there. Busman's holiday, you'd say. And that sounded reasonable. And that eventually you'd take me to meet your, your friends and family. You promised. No more twice a week overnights with me. In time, I had even considered my suicide attempt a blessing. The first one, yeah, that is. But that's not right. There was only one attempt. The second was successful. But I'll not blame you, Patrick. My death was my own. I mean, who else is indeed? And I suppose that I should have been happy with the rejection by Talia. Oh, sweet, sweet revenge. But I wasn't. I could have been vengeful, but my happiness extended my life, as you well know, Patrick. I uh, realize now that my premature and premeditated death was inevitable. I just was one of the few lot of people that were never meant to live. By some accident of nature, why it was given a life though it was never truly welcome. But unlike others of my ilk, I had a real taste of happiness. Okay, well, more than a taste, it was more like a, a dollop. So I, um, I hope that your PTS days in remission. And if you hadn't suffered, that war trauma, we might have made it. So, I truly hope your wartime trauma is in the back rear view mirror. And I trust that your wartime nightmares will diminish and the rest of your life will be strewn with favors. Now and forever. As you know, I'll be back, but not to hurt you, not to haunt you, just I'll return without malice.